are not the same Brooklyn you knew. So with Chaos Theory Season 2 finally out, it's time we discuss spoilers in a spoiler-filled review. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Jurassic World Chaos Theory Season 2 video. Earlier this week I had the privilege of watching Chaos Theory Season 2 early and for so long I have been wanting to talk about the spoilers of the show. We've already done our spoiler free review so if you've clicked on this video by some mistake and you don't want to be spoiled for the new season, I recommend going over to that video instead to learn about Chaos Theory before watching it but also not being spoiled because this video contains spoilers for Season 2 of Jurassic World Chaos Theory. So, you've been warned. Watching this show, I saw many moments where I knew fans would love and hate, <laughs> but also be slightly confused. So, I'm going to try and tackle all of these in this video. We're still targeting 250,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and with Chaos Theory Season 3, Jurassic World Rebirth, Jurassic World Evolution 3 and Jurassic Park Survival all coming in the next year and a half, I highly recommend sticking around on the channel for quite some time so that you don't miss out on everything exciting coming to the franchise. It's a win-win, I get your subscription and you get up-to-date content about the Jurassic franchise. But for now, once you're sat back, relaxed and enjoying your G Fuel after using code SWERVE, it's time to review Jurassic World Chaos Theory Season 2 with plenty of spoilers. Finally, I feel free, I can talk about the spoilers of the show. <laughs> so previously, we did do a spoiler-free review just a few days ago, I think two days before the initial release for you guys publicly, and I basically mentioned a few things here and there that I loved, hated, and was slightly confused about, and unfortunately, I couldn't name directly exactly why I liked it, exactly why I hated it, because obviously the show hasn't even released yet. So today, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, and firstly, let's talk about that very first episode. Episode 1, Batting Down the Hatches, I think it's called. The first episode actually is very, very well written. It pretty much brought back that grittiness of Season 1. For Season 1 of Chaos Theory, it was a completely different tone to Camp Cretaceous. Maybe on par, similar to Season 3 of Camp Cretaceous, but Season 1 of Chaos Theory was undoubtedly very, very good, and I think that's the unanimous agreement here that everyone can safely agree that Season 1 of Chaos Theory is a good season. It had some conspiracy, had a little bit of a dark nature, and it just had a really gritty feel to it. And Episode 1 of Season 2 continued with that feel. It was very well written, it had stakes, and it had suspense. And considering where they are, stuck on a boat with a Majungasaurus, there's not much more you can do. You just have a boat, and that's pretty much it. The other thing you can write in would be the weather, which was very well written in, but other than the weather, there's again, not much. So for what they had to play with in episode 1, I think they did a very, very good job there, and they kind of introduced the Majungasaurus very well. However, now I don't know if that's the failure of episode 1 or the failure of the last episodes, the Majungasaurus came across as the big bad dinosaur in episode 1, but the rest of the episodes, it was kind of just there, you know? It didn't really make too much sense for it to just appear, and unfortunately, I feel like the Majungasaurus set up really high standards in the first episode and then really dropped off. Now, again, I don't know if that's episode's one fault for making it look so good, or if that's the rest of the season's fault for not utilizing the Majungasaurus correctly, but either way, I was a little bit underwhelmed when it came to the Majungasaurus in the later episodes. And talking of uh, later episodes, I want to talk a little bit of the bad things here. Um, the show kind of felt like it was dragged out at some points. Now understandably there are going to be some moments where the action isn't as high, the suspense isn't there, and that's fine. And I feel like this opinion to have can be very hypocritical because the parts where I thought were very dragged out would be the establishment in Senegal and also the Brooklyn flashbacks. On one side of the page I was slightly uninterested and I was slightly bored at some stages, but on the other page I completely understand why they had to happen. Brooklyn flashbacks had to happen, we had to know what happened. They needed to establish Senegal and where they were and set up a plan to go upriver. So those episodes had to happen, but for some reason I just felt really uninterested in those episodes. And it felt like they were just following a weird formula. The campers would meet, they will talk to somebody, a dinosaur action sequence would happen, they will defeat the dinosaur and then they will calm down a bit leading into the next episode. I feel like they follow that formula way too often and that's kind of where I felt a little bit uninterested because it felt like I've already seen that before. 
So whilst I do agree that the establishment on Senegal and also the Brooklyn flashbacks had to happen, for some reason I just felt quite underwhelmed with them. But again, they needed to happen to form a basis for the show. But sticking on topics with the flashbacks, they were really cool when they did happen and they actually explained what Brooklyn was up to during the events of season 1, not just before but during. They basically go on to say that she was gaining the trust of the DLN to try and uncover who exactly was the one who tried to kill her. Now of course, she's aware that the weird creepy raptor lady was the one who tried to kill her, but she knew that there was a deeper secret to it and wanted to find the original source. And originally, when we were watching season 1 and we saw Brooklyn was revealed to be alive at the end of the season, we had so many questions. We didn't know what she was doing during season 1, we didn't know how long it has been from the events of her being attacked by the Allosaurus, which we now know as the Trosseraptors, to the point of episode 1 season 1, and we were just trying to work that out. And whilst it wasn't too in-depth, they basically just confirmed that Brooklyn, this entire time, was just gaining the trust of the DLN and working with the DLN. Now, the DLN was kind of focused on in the trailer a bit too much than what we got in the full season, so I would have toned that down just a little bit, but it would have been even more interesting to see something regarding the DLN in season 1, because then you can start to piece together some things here and there. That's pretty much my only nitpick, other than that I feel like they've really explained what Brooklyn was up to between the events of her arm coming off, all the way to season 2, so I think that was very good. The only nitpick is that DLN was focused on way too much in the trailer, which is fine, misdirection is, is okay in trailers, but maybe featuring the DLN in season 1 would have been a little bit better. But enough of my negativity, let's get into what I thought was really really good for this show. So like I said in my spoiler free review, the middle to the end of the season were fantastically well done. Initially when watching the first 4 episodes of the show, I was kind of sat there like, damn season 2 is really really bad. <laughs> but then I was like, whoa. Episode 5, episode 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whoa, okay, this changed. It's like one story happened in the very first segment of season 2, and then another story happened in the middle to the end of season 2. And I'm very glad that it did, and they actually picked up the pace a little bit and described this story a little bit more, because to me, it was fantastic. Getting into spoilers now, Sayuna was a great addition, and Daishin Lockman coming back to voice her character, wow! Like, don't get me wrong, she's a brilliant actress, but sometimes these actors on screen can't replicate how good their character is in animation. However, Daishin Lockman did an incredible job voicing Serena Santos. I think Serena Santos, whilst maybe the animation team could have done quite a bit better with her design, <laughs> Serena Santos was fantastic. It captured the cameo appearance that she had in Jurassic World Dominion, and whilst we don't know too much about her in Jurassic World Dominion, we get to explore a whole new side of this character in Chaos Theory, and I feel like that was very well done. So I am very appreciative for Daishin Lockman returning to voice Suna Santos, because I feel like there's nobody else who could do justice to Suna Santos rather than Lockman herself. So I'm very appreciative that she did return to voice this character. And I believe she even had input on this character, because when she was first focusing on the character Serena Santos, when she was preparing her lines for Jurassic World Dominion, she said in an interview that she came up with this massive headcanon of ideas for the character's backstory. And a few of those ideas were actually mentioned by Serena Santos in the show itself. So I believe she actually had quite a decent amount of input in this character, which again, it was very well done and I'm very glad they went with it. But that's not the only thing that I really enjoyed. The blind, or eyeless, Baryonyx. Wow. <laughs> this creature was incredible. At first, I thought, it's not really anything special, people might hate this dinosaur. But the way that they orchestrated the scene was immense. They felt like the tension was really there. If you've ever watched, like, The Quiet Place movies, where you have to be quiet. Whilst watching those movies, any kind of sound that you hear the character make, your heart starts to beat a little bit faster. And they did that with the Baryonyx in this show. Once you start to realise that because he's lost his eyes, the rest of his senses are heightened, you start to realise how much of a danger that this dinosaur is. I sat there thinking, wow, this is very, very dark. I was thinking, what the F is going on here? And then I learned that it also listens very, very well, that how much danger the campers were in, the way that there was barely any sound or music throughout that scene. Mwah. Chef's kiss to that because that was fantastic. But not only that, leading on with the Baryonyx, Red the Atrociraptor. Now don't get me wrong, we already established that Ghost is the alpha of the Atrociraptor pack. 
but the fact that we may see that Red is the most intelligent of the pack? Wow. What do I mean by this? Well, there was this one scene which blew me away and is arguably my favourite scene in the whole entire animated series. I love Camp Cretaceous Season 3, I love the Scorpius Rex, but I'm going to have to push that aside because Red, being intelligent enough to learn to mimic the clicking sound to control the baryonics, my mind was blown. I was, my, I, I, I was like, what? This is incredible. I was thinking, what's he doing at first? Is he communicating with the baryonics? That makes no sense. And then I realized that Red looked at Dr. Saar, realized he was clicking, the baryonics was responding to it, Red looked back at the baryonics, started making clicking sounds himself, and then partially communicating with the baryonics. I was sat there in disbelief. I was like, this. This is how you portray intelligence in dinosaurs. Not the way that they did it with Blue, but this way that they did it with Red. I am so, so glad that they went ahead and did something like this. My only nitpick about this is the fact that now it's clearly been established that Red is the most intelligent Atrociraptor. However, he is not the Alpha, and in Jurassic World Dominion, he gets fooled by Barry just dive rolling to the side. So, that's my only nitpick. Either way, Red was brilliant in this show. But to wrap up here with the ending, it was quite underwhelming. Now at first when I said this, I actually got quite a lot of hate online for people who haven't seen the show before and I was really confused why I'm getting hate. And now that the show has released, I see more people agreeing with me that the ending was very underwhelming. Sometimes a little bit emotional in some aspects, some people completely missing the idea of Brooklyn actually still going undercover and protecting her friends, not the fact that she chose to work for Serena. So some people are still confused about it. But I feel like it was very underwhelming because this is practically the exact same scene that we got from season one, besides the emotional impact. The campers in season one managed to get on a boat and they went to somewhere mysterious. Brooklyn managed to get on an aircraft and went to somewhere mysterious. It was just kind of them reinventing a the wheel at this point. The only way I could have seen this being less underwhelming is perhaps seeing, like, you know, when you're on an aircraft on a plane and some aircrafts have a screen that fall down in front of you and show you where you're going. Maybe something like that would have been really nice to tease exactly where Brooklyn and Serena were going on the aircraft. Something like that would have made it less underwhelming, but either way, I just feel like they could have done the ending a little bit better. It, again, like I said in my non-spoiler review, the ending felt like it kind of just happened, and that was it. But there we have it. Season 2 was, overall, a lot of fun to watch, with some slow and unnecessary moments, but it reclaimed its place in my heart with how dark and interesting of a direction the show went in towards the end. I just love it so much, and I was so invested in it all. I can't wait to see where they're going with the third season because it feels like they're shaping it up to be a great story that flows into Jurassic World Dominion, just like I predicted a few months ago. We'll be talking about that soon here on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed for exactly that. And actually, looking back on the channel, we made loads of theories that ended up being right, and I don't think I've ever been right for one thing singular regarding Jurassic in a very long time. <laughs> but for now, be sure you like the video if you enjoyed, and comment your thoughts of this season below. But most importantly, make sure you're all staying safe out there, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye Hello, hi, you, did you enjoy the video? Just a little reminder to press that like button and also subscribe. I just want to thank my Patreons for this month on screen right here, as giving me that little extra support really does go a long way. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.